So what we have here is a <coughs> laptop running Ubuntu Linux and a little mesh testing node with a Heltec V3 in it. And that is plugged in to the laptop. <coughs> and on the command line there, you can see the TC2 BBS. That's the uh, communications channel for America. And <coughs> that's the BBS software he recently released. And this is then uh, providing a BBS <coughs> via mesh tastic on 868 megahertz and we can see who will connect to it once it's uh, had time to be found. <clears throat> so hello, I'm going to show you how to install this BBS software from the communications channel, another YouTuber. So it's called the TC2 um, BBS, I think CC2 is what he calls it, <clears throat> like CC squared. And I've got it running on a Heltec <clears throat> Meshtastic node. I put it in this box because it's got a big battery, 7,000 milliamp hour battery, and um, a transparent plastic cover so that you can read the uh, display and also so the flashing lights can keep the neighbors awake. And on top, <clears throat> for an antenna, I just put a dummy load. It's actually a 20 dB attenuator, so it's got 40 dBs return loss, so it's a really good load so as not to damage the transmitter in the node and also not radiate any signals while I'm playing around with it. So that's the Heltec V3 <coughs> Meshtastic node. And what I'm going to do <coughs> is install the BBS software on a Ubuntu system. You could put it on any Ubuntu, any computer running Ubuntu. Um, <coughs> I've got it running on a server, which works nicely, of course, just leave it running. I've installed it on a laptop, as you saw in the little video introduction, and I'm going to install it on another laptop. And because I'm too lazy to install OBS on that laptop, I'm going to uh, SSH into it, um, into a freshly installed Ubuntu instance. So um, the way I'm going to do that, this is Windows, <clears throat> is I'm going to SSH user, that's my username, at 192.168.77.155. Yep, it's found it, my super safe password which is that, and then we're in. <clears throat> so this is the Ubuntu instance running on the um, laptop, <clears throat> which is going to be the uh, BBS system. It's uh, Ubuntu 22.04. Um, I haven't tried it on 24 because you never know if these things are going to work, and it's a fairly new distribution, so I'm sticking playing safe. Anyway, what I'm going to do is to uh, copy-paste commands into there to make it a little bit easier. <clears throat> so um, the uh, um, <clears throat> node was already plugged in. What I can do is I can check if it can be seen by using this command. I'm going to paste in here. And, oh, password again. <clears throat> and there we are. <clears throat> it uh, has found a meshtastic node plugged into the USB port on the Ubuntu computer, and it's given it a name TTY USB 0. Some things get called TTY um, ACM, was it zero? Something like that, but this one's <coughs> US, uh, TTY USB zero. So um, that looks like it works, which is good. It will be seen. And <coughs> oh, yeah, something that I like to do sometimes is to check if I'm uh, able to access that port. So it's a good idea to type groups see what groups my user is in, who's called user, and he's not in the dialect group. This may not be necessary, I'm not sure, but for safety's sake, I'm going to put it in there. So if you add the user to the group called dialect, then it'll definitely have access to the serial port via USB. So I've done that. Um, normally you should log out and log back in again to uh, make that work. <clears throat> I'm not going to do it yet. Um, I need to see if Git is installed on this computer because it really is very freshly installed a few minutes ago. No, it's not. So let's do sudo apt install git so that we can download the software from GitHub. Yes. <clears throat> it's going to take a few seconds. And, and then I'm going to git clone the software from the GitHub page. For the project. And of course I'll put these commands in the description 
to make it easier for you. So let's do that. Do a little bit. It's done it. Didn't take too long, did it? Um, oh, 73k. <laughs> it's not too big. Good. So that's got the software which has been created <clears throat> in a directory. Let's have a look at the directories I've got now. Yeah, there it is. This is those are all the standard um, <clears throat> directories on Ubuntu Linux. This one is the one that's just been created. So if we CD into that, take a look. What have we got? Okay, <clears throat> so let's copy those files in those couple of seconds. Server.py, that's the Python program called server that runs this PBS server. So that seems to work nicely. Let's um, see if Python is installed on this fresh Ubuntu. <clears throat> it's always worth checking. Yes, it is version 3.10.12. Let's move back up to the top of the screen. <clears throat> so Python is installed, programming environment. Um, Python uses pip package manager to install things. So let's see what version of pip we got. We haven't. Oh, that's nice. <clears throat> they even tell you how to do it. <laughs> so I'm just going to copy paste that. Oops. Try to copy paste it. I'm not very good at Windows. Um, Let's see if I click where well, it worked. So installing the Python package manager called pip. That'll take a few seconds. <clears throat> and this <clears throat> server for the BBS is actually run in a virtual environment on the Ubuntu computer. <clears throat> um, so we need to be able to set that up. That's going to take a little while, isn't it, to install. Oh, 192 megabytes. Okay. Whilst it's doing that, then let's go and have a look at something else, which is going to be where's my web browser here. Let's have a look at this. Um, those are my notes. I'll copy paste the important ones into the description below. <clears throat> um, this is the uh, server for the BBS running on an Ubuntu server, which is running under Proxmox. Um, some people haven't used Proxmox and ask me what it is. So it's a bare metal hypervisor, type one hypervisor that just runs on a small computer here. And as you can see, I've got various different virtual machines loaded up and running um, OpenWebRx, several instances of that on Ubuntu, and also Dragon, which I'm growing to like more and more, Dragon OS for radio stuff. And <clears throat> this is the desktop view of a desktop um, Ubuntu instance. If I hit Control C, it'll stop the server. I hope nobody was using it. <laughs> so uh, this is um, the command line. This then is the virtual environment, which is what I'm about to install on the installation I'm doing. If I just uh, start the server again using that command, <clears throat> then you can see it starts up and now it's running and talking to the Heltec BBS uh, node that's plugged into it, waiting for anything to come in. These error messages, which you see from time to time, I originally assumed meant it wasn't going to work, but actually um, they're not fatal errors, so uh, they just flow past. And when there's any activity on the server, you can see that too. Anyway, let's go back and see if this has finished yet. <clears throat> and that off. And yes, it has finished. Okay, so um, what did I just do? I installed Python 3 pip. Okay, so... What am I going to do next? Then I'm going to copy paste the next command. It's easier than typing, which is going to start or set up the virtual environment. So let's put this in here. Virtual environment is not created. Successfully, it doesn't show up if it's not available. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> okay, I thought I just did that. Oh, it's actually a slightly different. That's interesting. <clears throat> so let's install that. Uh, control C, sudo. Right click in Windows to paste. Ta -da. So that's getting installed. Let's see now if this command will work. Yep. The silence is deafening. That works. No errors. So <clears throat> that has started the virtual environment in Python. And then what I need to do is activate that like this. 
I'm going to do a clear again, <clears throat> get the top of the screen. So that's now activated. And we know that the virtual environment is activated because there's this venv virtual environment in brackets before this prompt, command prompt on the command line. So the virtual environment's active, working. And um, <clears throat> what I need to do is to install the software now and <clears throat> using pip. And there should be a file called requirements.txt in here. Let's have a look. Now oh, there it is, requirements.txt. And um, let's have a quick look in there. That work? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> These are the two um, libraries that it needs. It's not a lot, so that's going to be quick. So let's do that. Who can store that? Requirements.txt. <clears throat> so this is now installing the BBS software in that virtual environment. And uh, shouldn't take too long. Whilst it's doing that, let me just uh, see what I need to do next. <clears throat> then I need to edit a config file. So that's finished. Let's do another clear. So um, if we look in here, we've got this file also called config.ini. <clears throat> that's the configuration file for when the server starts up. So what I'm going to do is edit that quickly. Um, there's not too much to do. Um, <clears throat> so the interface type is serial. You can't use the mouse in here. You've got to use the cursor key. So type equals serial is correct. The name of the port is what's already suggested here. <clears throat> TTY USB 0. Don't need an IP address at the moment. Um, actually, looking down here, you can synchronize this BBS node with other nodes and you just put the, uh, the like MAC addresses on MeshTastic for the other nodes, and then it will synchronize with those to forward messages from one node to the other when the user is connected to that node. Probably. Um, I haven't tried it out yet, but that's the next thing to try. <clears throat> anyway, so there was one edit to make, which is to delete the uh, hash to uncomment this line. So let's do Control X to exit, modify buffer, yes and right to that, press enter. And so that's now saved. And probably now I can probably start the server, see what happens. So let's see what happens when I do this. Um, right click. So that's Python execute server. Boom, there it is. <coughs> oh, don't get the pretty colors when you use <coughs> SSH. And also it can't connect up to this uh, serial port, probably because I didn't log off and log on again or reboot. Let's take a look, see if it's going to work. Having rebooted, hopefully we can now access that serial port. And luckily, <coughs> Linux has command line history that survives a reboot, never mind closing the terminal, unlike Windows. So I'm digging at Windows, aren't I? Um, let's just go through the command line history. And this will also show you how to set up the server and start it. So having installed it, you don't need to install it every time you start it, of course. So all you need to do is change directory into the um, directory where the server is located, which is here, yes. Having done that, then you have to start the virtual environment, which is two commands, this one. So that's telling Python environment to start <clears throat> the virtual environment, and then you activate it like this. So that's that. So what do you have to do? Change directory start the environment and activate it. that's three and then the fourth command is just to um, <clears throat> start the server itself which is in here somewhere there it is so let's just do that so that's the fourth command and this time you see there are no errors it doesn't say that it can't access <clears throat> tty usb zero so uh, looks like it's working <laughs> this doesn't look any different but should be accessible now as a um, <clears throat> BBS. I'm just wondering if I can actually access it quickly. <clears throat> I hadn't planned to do this, so let's see if I can do that. Um, I have to remember the name of that device, short name, which I think is that. And you have to send a direct message <clears throat> to the BBS. Doesn't matter what's in it. Um, officially, if you send H, you get, which is help, you get the the menu. But I can send anything, um, so I will actually send an H. So let's do direct message <clears throat> to that node. H, no, doesn't want to let me talk. H, send it. So I've just sent an H, and there you are, you see, <clears throat> the node has just received the letter H. 
So um, EYR5 is the node connected to this mobile phone, and uh, EYR2 is this node which has received the command H, and it's actually responded. I don't know if you can see that, <clears throat> but there is on the screen of the phone the menu that's been sent back from the BBS to show that the BBS is indeed working. And it hasn't actually given any errors yet. <clears throat> but as I said, occasionally you see errors going up the screen in that terminal window, and I just tend to ignore them. Um, so that's it. It is fairly straightforward, I think. Don't be afraid of using the terminal in Linux. Um, I don't know where else you could host it. Uh, I've hosted it on Ubuntu 22.04. I don't think there's a Windows version of this server. Oh, I just noticed this box. I got this box, <clears throat> metal box, shiny and reflective. I thought I could put a Haltech or another board in there for a Meshtastic node, and it's shielded and it's um, fairly weatherproof. And I can put an antenna like this connector on the top of here nicely, just drill a few holes and put a fairly big battery in here. There's a 7,000 milliamp hour battery. You can just see the top of it, the green thing there. <clears throat> that will fit in here. Um, the only thing is that I forgot that when you put the lid on and it's nicely shielded, the um, Bluetooth signals won't get in and out from the board. So I'll have to have two holes on the top, <clears throat> one for the Meshtastic um, uh, LoRa 868 megahertz antenna and the other one for a Bluetooth antenna, <laughs> which I forgot. But never mind, it was it seemed like a good idea at the time. Anyway, let me know uh, how you get on if you try this in the uh, comments below. I look forward to reading your comments. Try to answer any questions. And uh, thank you for watching this video.